Today we're going to share with you the best practices for online discussions that we're going to be utilizing in the Research Pathways course this semester. We're going to be talking a lot about what a substantive online post is. First of all, make sure you read the question and address every part of the question or the discussion prompt. You should always be relevant to that topic or question that has been posted. Always use complete sentences when answering in an online discussion board and be focused and organized with your answer. Check for correct spelling and grammar. Sometimes it's best to put your answer first in a Word document to check for spelling and grammar. Always include specific examples or citations from sources to support the statements that you're making. When you respond to another student's post, make sure that you use the reply button to their post. And thoroughly explain why you agree or disagree with the other student's post. And make sure that you are respectful when you agree or disagree. And all your posts should be adding new ideas or information to the discussion. When responding to the main discussion question or prompt, please make sure that you start a new thread with your initial response. And you use the bullets that we just discussed in the last slide to make sure that you're posting a substantive post. If the assignment is that you are to respond to another student's post, make sure that when you respond to another student, you don't start a new thread. You want to use the reply button to the other student's initial post. Again, always be respectful when responding. You should never just agree or disagree with that student. You need to provide your reasoning and specific examples or citations to back up that agreement or disagreement. You may include questions, a possible clarification to the initial student's post or viewpoint. And your response needs to be original. It should just not repeat what the other student said. It should add new ideas or information to the discussion. Let's review again what a substantive post is. So what's a low quality post? It, a low quality post means you haven't added anything to the discussion. It's not teaching us anything or contributing anything positive or substantial to the discussion. If it's prejudicial, off topic, or you're making claims that you're not substantiating with examples or citations, if a response is poorly thought out, if it's off topic, off focus, or very carelessly typed or confusing, and if you're disrespectful to another student, that would be a low quality post. Let's review what a high quality post is. It's going to add something to discussion and teach us something. It might contain information from another valid, credible source, or apply a concept from a source or a published text or a legitimate, legitimate website in a meaningful way. It will help us understand the material that you're posting. And it will not only introduce new ideas, but it's going to help us relate that post to something that we're discussing in the topic or even something that would be considered um, transferable to our everyday life. A high-quality post will also elaborate and clarify your viewpoint on the topic, including examples, citations, and evidence to, to support your viewpoint or what you've posted. It should make connections with what we've been discussing or make connections with another student's post. And it might challenge viewpoints, of course, appropriately and respectfully. Here is a quick graphic of all the things that we've discussed about making sure that all the discussion board posts and replies are what we considered high quality and substantive. This chart is available in our templates and documents for research in our Schoology course. These slides are also available for you in week one so that you can review at any time. 